we see that the in Monga Monday, we have international and universal celebrations of all holy days. <laughs> and uh, later on, they will also do a live performance on this. They will, um, I don't know, they said to us that the internet is not working for now. They cannot come. Also yesterday, they were not able to come. But today, uh, we are so lucky to have some listeners who are eager to share about our the love song of the Bible. And that is also a very beautiful meditation. And I have copied it and I have brought it also into Radha Dasyam room. Yes, we read many times with Gurudev also. He loves this part of the Bible very much. So today, because this special day of the birthday of Jesus is uh, a nice moment to share uh, one of the main uh, uh, Verses in the Bible. In my case, I can say that Gurudev uh, connect uh, the Vedic scriptures and uh, Christian uh, scriptures in a in a most uh, beautiful way. Because if we understand that the love is a universal energy that not depends on a religious system then uh, it's more easy to connect people in the world the atmas so that they not cut it in different ways, but they are united in the meaning of love. And uh, there are, um, this love is, is, love and peace is uh, maybe the main um, information, not the main feeling what is left from Jesus. You know, in the last centuries, there was always a war. Now we know many wars took place in the world. But we know from our forefathers that uh, especially uh, on Christmas Day, they stopped firing in many wars. That was no other um, authority could do this because there was so uh, fanatic many times in the wars and they think other people are their enemies. But on Christmas Day, many times they stopped this because of this special energy we can feel in our Christian countries in this time. No? And this is this loving energy and the peace of that what uh, Jesus left. And um, we can read this in the Bible. I think this was spoken from St. Paul, no? right? This No, Johannes. No, no. No, Corintha, I think it's from. The, maybe one, uh, one knows from, from whom is the Corintha letter. Who are the Christian scholars? 
I think it's St. Paul, it was St. Paul, but maybe it's also not. We find out it was one of the disciples of Jesus. Paulus, here. Sudevi says. Sudevi, yeah, she knows. It was St. Paul, no? So he wrote this to a community in Corinth. In this, uh, in this time, Corinth was a, a, a big uh, uh, city, or also, uh, I think it was also like a kingdom, Corinth. And we know that the Jewish people was living all around the uh, Mediterranean Sea. And uh, in, the, in the beginning, that was only Jewish or mainly Jewish people who got uh, uh, this Christian, uh, uh, what to say, uh, knowledge from Jesus by uh, by the first uh, disciples of Jesus and one of this first disciple was St Paul and they travel many many times around this whole uh, Roman empire to to meet to give sangha and uh, why they do this because they got this loving and peaceful feeling directly from the Guru, from Jesus. And so there was no WhatsApp and like this. So they have to travel with camels, with horses, with ships very simple ways to give this feeling, this bath from Jesus to others. And um, when we see how they influence the people in that time, how successful it was, we can see how powerful this bath was and how attractive to other people. Because in the first time after Jesus left, many, many uh, uh, Christian communities growing very fast because it was so attractive to the people in this time to listen about love and peace. And um, simultaneously, we can see in the time of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, how powerful the devotees was in that time, his disciples. They got the bath, the feeling from Mahaprabhu. And wherever they are come in contact to the people, even Muslims was attracted. They was not all enemies. Many of them were so attracted that they entered the movement of chanting the holy names. And even now, I like to complete the circle from 2000 years to 600 years to 600 years ago and to actually now to our uh, present time. Even now we can see how attractive this loving mood is to people when they come in contact with one soul who is uh, in this mood, who, try, who, who, ta who take this mood in his heart, who carry this mood in his heart. We can see 
in contact to our Gurudev, Srila Sadhu Maharaj, when we come in contact to him, so many people, even we, <laughs> we are so attracted by his mood and his loving exchange. I think everybody can share this, who, whoever met him. How attractive this loving mood, this bath is. This is not only words or yes, or teaching. This is really, I think it is a energy what is, comes from heart to heart. It moves from heart to heart. So, and this is so beautiful and we can understand that people are very attracted to this heart, loving hearts who are in this line, even of Jesus or Mahaprabhu, because the source of both is love. I think we can agree with this, that the love is the red line uh, in both relationships. If we enter in the Christianity and stay in contact with Jesus, or if we are Gaudiya Vaishnavas. Love is the red line, what connected us in this, in a beautiful mood. So, maybe Suniti like to read some verses from this uh, St. Paul, what he write about the love to these people in Corinth, in this beautiful Mediterranean city in this time, one of the most beautiful cities in this time. Hmm? Yes. I want to also add that at that time, when I see sometimes at this Christmas seasons, I watch movies of Jesus and uh, these movies are always special because they show the conflict of that time between the understanding of God as a far away person that can only be had a relationship through the priest or Jesus who says, I am the son of God. Yes. So he has this relationship and he is speaking from the feelings of these relationships. And the priest, they are speaking about the God and the sin and how people should become sinless and how they can, you know, be dependent on the church. And they talking what we call in our Indian languages, uh, vaidi, vaidi love, the love that is... Uh, ruled by many, many do's and don'ts. And Jesus comes and he gives that spontaneous, that direct love that is more fearless and more soft-hearted. So this Paulus wants to, wants to give to the people. And I was meditating about this the last three days and I think, oh, how can I feel my Swamini in this? How can I feel Shrimati Radhika to be this love and how she is connecting also all different kinds of religion when we are taking shelter of her? So if anyone would like to share on this, please don't hesitate. Please just jump in. 
I am, we are very happy when somebody wants to share on this. But first you have to read. Yeah. If I speak, this is the first Corinthians 13. If I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but I have not love, I am becoming a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. There is a, we can give this example, if there is a machine speaking. Now, we, nowadays we have machines, they can speak, Google Maps or whatever. Alexa. <laughs> so they speak very nicely. <laughs> Sometimes they send us in wrong directions <laughs> and, and some some fell in lakes or like this because they follow this. Wrong navigation. Wrong navigation. But there is not an Atma behind. There is no soul behind this. And in the machine, there is never can be love. Love is really a special energy. What is only find in living souls, in Atmas. Love you can only find in living souls. Even in animals, everywhere you can find this energy of love. And uh, because of the Kali Yuga, many people are not able to live together with other people. Today, many people are singles because they try to live together or whatever happened. But then after some time, they go separate. We see many people stay alone. There are different reasons. That is not only that they cannot, but it's hard to stay together in these days. And you, it's rarely fine to uh, find uh, bigger families even. Uh, we remember that our grandfather, grandmother was all under one roof. roof. Uncle, aunts, they all stayed together. That was not a problem, but these days it's not possible somehow. And uh, but many people now, when they are single, they uh, they buy a dog or a cat. And uh, if you speak to these people, they will really say that they share love with uh, with dog and uh, cat, because also animal says this love because they are actually atmas. And love is the energy of the Atma. And the source of love we know is our Swamini. There this energy is coming from. And so we can understand when Jesus has so much love that there was a direct connection to our Swamini, to the source of love. And his loving mood he gave to his disciples. And we can understand that St. Paul, who was not at all a, a disciple in the beginning, he was really an enemy of the Christianity in the beginning time. He was a soldier. His name was Saulus. No? Mm -hmm. Saulus, yes. But after 
uh, fighting against the Christians, he came in contact to Jesus. One day when he was, I think, on the way to Damascus, then Jesus appeared. on the on this uh, way and he asked him why you was i verfolgen why are you haunted or why are why you are hunting me why are you fighting against me and after this small conversation and the direct contact to jesus his heart was filled with Jesus bath. The same happened with Chaitanya, Nityananda, but especially Chaitanya. If, if you come in contact with such a elevated, powerful Atma, they can even a, a, a dirty heart uh, like uh, uh, Jagai and Madai, we always give this example our, ourselves. It it will be cleaned after this, and this bath will enter this heart of this Atma. And so after this meeting, St. Paulus was completely changed. From an enemy, a Christian enemy, he becomes to a loving devotee. In one, in one meeting with Jesus, and so because of this, he can write uh, a sloka like this, what we just read now. Should I repeat? Yes, please. If I speak with the tongue of men and of angels, but I have no love, I am becoming sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. Like Google. Yeah, like a machine. Like a machine. Means I also thought when I read this, You know, sometimes also in our devotee circles, we think that I have to be such a good person to speak or such a knowledgeable person. I have to be like a learned person. Hmm. But here we hear that the main subject and the main qualification is not to speak nicely or to know many things, but to have love. Mm, yes, that's the beauty in a realized soul. Many can uh, read the books and uh, repeat every verse. No, we have many examples of, of very intelligent people who can read books and then one time and they then they, they can repeat the whole uh, uh, part of this. But there is no meaning that they have a realization of that what they are reading. For example, if I read this uh, from St. Paul without realization of, realization of love, then it is like he said, it becomes a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. It's a sound only. <laughs> yeah, then I'm a recorder. So there is no need for recording. In newer days, we can use machines to uh, uh, to read something. 
but this machine will never realize what is the meaning of that, what they are writing, what they are writing uh, about the subject. And love is how, how will you explain love if you never feel love? If you have no love, that is how to explain to another person. No? But our good fortune is that it's in the nature of lo living beings, automatically there is love. Our first time in this life, we start with love from the mother. Even the animals. You can see a tiger who is normally catching some uh, and eating another animal for food. But with the same mouth, he catched uh, some food when he take the babies how softly he catch the babies and bring from a to b so automatically love is in our life we are not machines it's also in and in, in sometimes my uh, my computer asks me are, are you robot and i have i have to write no <laughs> right? A robot is asking, are you a no, robot? Are you a robot? Yeah. <laughs> really funny to think about it. <laughs> yes. No, but you are a robot. Yes. I'm also not a robot. <laughs> funny. So maybe, I continue. Maybe, maybe he thinks that you are related. <laughs> yeah. Maybe he wants a relationship, you mean? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, so funny. So, yes, the second verse in this beautiful love uh, glorification is, and if I have the gift of prophecy, and if I know all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains but i have not love i am nothing wow this is very wow you see how much importance he gives to the love mm -hmm. he put the love up to all other gifts. authorities or gifts or whatever. So, one who, who see the future, we will say, wow, he's very elevated. He's a prophet. Same as when one knows all mysteries, what is behind the matter and all these things. That means he has all this knowledge uh, in this world, what the scientists, they say they have all this knowledge. They know everything and maybe one week later they uh, do some correction because they found something in the earth what is different to them, what they say one day, uh, one week before. But they think they have all the knowledge. <laughs> and they give us to believe that they are right. And because they never found the, the Lord in the earth, <laughs> they say there is no Lord. But we know it's a different. And if we have all faith, so many times with Gurudev we speak about faith, hope and love. Even if we have all faith, 
as strong that we can remove mountains. This uh, example is also given by uh, Jesus, that if we have strong faith, we can remove mountains. And we see in the, the scientists, they, they uh, build rockets to the moon, so they have a lot of faith in their knowledge. But at the end he writes, but have no love. I am nothing, St. Paul say. So, and love is always, we need a relationship. If we have not a one who we can love, what happened? We cannot share love. We need one to share love. A partner, a baby, a cat, a dog. We need to share love. Because we know when we share love, it becomes double. If I can maybe just share in connection Please. with this. Please, maybe can uh, someone yeah. put up uh, his picture? So, uh, just what you said now, uh, this is pure example without Guru Dev, you know. At that time, when, when I met him, before I met him, I was sick and tired of a YD, of all rules, regulations, this mm. dryness. I was so sick and tired. I wanted to leave everything. Mm. And then... At that time, Daita Prema came and told me that uh, some sannyasi came to Zagreb, Croatia, and if you want to come. And I was thinking, come on, again, something, uh, you know, I was, I didn't want it. But in the end, I said, okay, I will go. And when I came there, I saw the sannyasi mm -hmm. sitting. And of course, I think, okay, I will do pranam, everything, mm -hmm. bare basis, you know, like, uh, but just like a rule, not that I really was thinking. Uh, and when I gave obeisances, he didn't say nothing. He just hugged me wow. and that was it. <laughs> and that was it. Mm. All was said and done. No words were needed. Mm. That's it. Who have love, he can give it. No need words even. No. So in this way, he, like that, I uh, received from Guru Dev, you know, that first <laughs> contact. So, yeah, definitely what you're saying about Paul and Jesus' disciples, because they received love from him. Mm. And because of that, they can spread that love everywhere, wherever they go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so nice. And what I would like to add also to your example, Stina Dayal, very nice, is that I have uh, the last days, I was uh, meditating how love is making us or me it was more about me and not us but i guess it applies also to many who have the same feelings innocent again because we come with some pains and burned out feelings of you know dryness or disappointments in relationships with teachers or whatever and love makes everything you know, like clean, it clears everything. And the innocence of this child childness 
the child of myself, of my soul, can again be felt. That's my um, meditation about what love does or what like a loving uh, Darcy does because sometimes my mind and my old impressions or my understandings, they become like a burden. Like you said, I was so fed up. I was so tired. And it becomes like a burden of, you know, all these disappointments. But then when love comes, in any way, <clears throat> then she gives this innocent. That's what I felt when I heard Gurdjieff talk the other day. He was not talking long because, again, the internet broke. But these, you know, few minutes, again, they instill the innocence of this child of divine love, who I really am, and the mind and the all these impressions from this life, they can go out. They can again, you know, be like what they are somewhere in the back, not in the front. <laughs> yeah, because with, with love, actually, everything becomes so, so simple. And mm. this becomes simple because it's natural. It's natural. natural. That's, that's, that's the point. It. Yeah. It's our nature. You have to work for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's no natural, endeavor. It just state, happens. The state mm -hmm. of love. Yeah. yeah. Ness, can I say something too? Merry Christmas, Maduri. Yes, please. Merry Christmas Maduri. to all of you. Merry. I think. Um, I think so love is the possibility to forgive and as human beings we are experiencing so much things so much good things so much bad things but uh, if we have the love in our heart we can forgive and for me it's very important otherwise we're carrying so much on our own shoulders and when we can forgive, we get so nice. Light. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Madhuri. Radhe, Radhe. Radhe, Radhe, Madhuri. Hey, Radhe. <laughs> Radhe, 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 and happy Christmas to all of you. <laughs> I was just happy. thinking when I heard you all that, you know, some people, they distinguish between healing and love. They think healing is something else than love. But actually, I realized that this is not a fact. Because whatever makes you sick is the missing of love. Some aspect of love was missing in this moment. Then it made you sick. First, it made you sick because you were actually hurt. Then by the time, if you carry it on, it will come even to the bodily platform. Because it always goes from fine to cross. This is the way the energy is going. So when your feelings are hurt, later on, it will also come to the bodily platform. So but actually, what can heal you? Only the purest love can heal everything. I mean, really everything. Even your material consciousness can be healed and it can be completely changed into a spiritual because love means spiritual consciousness the purest love is spiritual so all together love is the only thing which can heal you and give life to you as soul because you are love and this is healing of everything 
all material problems will go if we concentrate on our soul and on our loving exchange. And this is actually what Jesus also wanted to give us. He was saying, mother and father, son. Mother, father, son. Relationship, pure love exchange. All problems gone because he could heal people. Why? Because he was in the ownership of this purest relation and exchange of love. I just wanted to make this again into our minds, bring it again back, because this is connected actually. Because Jesus was the greatest healer and he was a very very high elevated spiritual person in relationship. Jai Shirati. Jai Shirati. Yes. Wonderful. Thank you, Gauravani. And another thing I want to share is that when I hear this verse, I was thinking of Bhaktivinoda Thakur also. Because also at that time when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had just left, maybe 100 years, then there were many uh, like um, mystic babas and mystic, uh, mm, how do you say this, magicians who like to control others by their mis mystery knowledge. And, you know, and then also, the, you know, he, he was fearless. He was just like, in the name of love, in the name of Srimati Radhika, he was just uh, giving, you know, the, the love as the goal and bhakti as the goal. And this yogi, there was one yogi, for those of you who don't know the story, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he was the judge of that district in Navadvip, in Bengal. And there was a yogi, and he was telling everyone that he is Krishna. He was a, you know, a bogey yogi, <laughs> an enjoying yogi uh, mystic. And he says, I am Krishna, and I have appeared to invite all the young girls of all these beautiful families to have the rasa dance with me. So like this, he wanted to invite all the girls of Navadvip, and it was a big scandal. But this Bogi Yogi was not a real, you know, devotee of the Lord. He wanted to enjoy, you know, the the magic that he had in his eyes or in his uh, uh, voice. And so Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he was very bold, and he was... Uh, uh, in that time, it was not so easy to, to go against these people because the people at, in, in Bengal and Navadvip especially, they easily believed that he was an incarnation of Krishna. So he said, no, 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 he is not Krishna. He is not uh, bringing your girls to rasa dance. He is just bringing your girls to hell. So he was bringing him in the jail he was putting him in the jail and because of the power of this mystic yogi all the family members of Bhaktivinoda Thakur became sick and you know he has a big family and also Bhaktivinoda Thakur became sick because this bogi yogi he did some mystic yoga some mystic mantras to make them all sick so then Bhaktimino Thakur was meditating and praying to Nitai Gauranga and then he got the inspiration that in jail they should cut the hair of this mystic yogi. You remember that story, many of you do. And uh, after they cut the hair, this person uh, lost all their uh, mystic powers and everything became again good and all the girls of the 
families were uh, safe and yes that was also another case and i think that um, this is what is also said here that if i know all the mysteries and i have the gift of prophecy i have many mystical abilities that doesn't make me a darcy a, a divine uh, person who loves and who feels as a servant of love that was also my recollection at that time when i hear this uh, verse should we go to the next one yes or anybody else would like to share on this Good. I want to share, uh, please. I want to share a small experience now. I sit here in this blessing and wonderful association. Always my tears come out when I say and think this. Uh, and I know nothing. It's, it's very special my time now. I know nothing. Only I, I feel the the law of uh, no reason for make any law or, or understand another or it's nothing to do only my my surrendering to treasury rada and guru dev and this was i'm so thank you Lee, for being this occupation it's only a feeling i can share i, I know nothing uh, my whole life i have ideas what is law what can i I give what can I do? What I do? What feel I? This was very crazy time in the thirty years. Now I'm free from these crazy things in my head. I feel it in this wonderful Birkenfeld association, <laughs> and this is very special. And I'm so thankful. Thank you all you together. <laughs> I'm always like Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> I stay a little child always. <laughs> was always in India my feeling, also in my Shiva tradition. I always I feel as Alice in Wonderland. I don't, I don't know what happens. And now it's gone. The next step I can go to Vrindavan. I'm I'm very surprising. It's so magic. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but I want to go and want to make my seva. Thank you for Hi -ho. all your all here, all phases. Utkalika, Balarika, Ravani, Prima Maduri, Maduri, all this. We are all, all, all one. I feel it, it's not different from us. It's not different. This, I, think, it, I, get, I think it is a good sign. Please correct me when I nothing know. <laughs> that is the step for, for love. <laughs> I cannot nothing. It's so free for me. I can do my sadhana and make my natural things. Natural things I make like a robot. Rajeshwari, <laughs> we are so happy that you are under us. You know, you are really a gem, another gem. It's so wonderful to be with you. And I think you understood the most important thing. Love and how to exchange it. So you understood everything. I'm very proud that we are in your association, actually. You are a wonderful person. And you know how to express your feelings to bhajans and to words. And that helps us also. Thank you. Rade, rade. It's not my pleasure. But uh, it's, a, it's like I want to die every second in my life. Many years. I, I want to die. This is the preparation for connecting Gurudev. Before I connect Gurudev, it was a feeling I have to die. And all material, bodily and uh, all in all things in my life, I, I, I want in the last 15 years, 15 years, I want to die, die, die. And this was the, the blessing from Shiva, my Shiva tradition. Always I, I think it was a blessing from Shiva that I can go the next step. And Zuniti say, say always, you are good um, 
burning out before you come to us. You, you like uh, uh, burning like in the kitchen, in the pot. <laughs> Many years I have burned in my, <laughs> with my, with my sadhana to share this Ababa in my things. And also Maduri, I'm in the, Many years I go to my with you in, in your association, in your Sangita. Many years we are together and go with other people. All I and it was very special to be Maduri with you for three years, one year in the, the Sound, sound Therapeutic uh, School. That's me, very changed me also. And thank you for, thank you, it's, it's enough words. It's I think very, I learned from you too. <clears throat> thank you, Rajeshwari. And uh, I know what I loved very much you said before, that you said, hey, there is no difference between us now here in this association, yeah? And to feel really that we are not different, yeah? That we are one and... Uh, and um, connected in our hearts as a group is a big present for me that you say it. Thank you. So beautiful. And uh, there are different motivations of love also. And uh, not always it's so clear what is the uh, meaning of real love. Because love in the material world is always temporary. Even if we love a person as much as is possible, more than a mother loves a child or a child loves her mother, even then it's temporary. So, and we have to be... Uh, uh, enttäuscht. Disappointed. Disappointed. In all our material loving exchanges, there has to be a disappointment because it is temporary. But we are eternal. So, in this meaning, we have to focus our love really on the eternal relationship to our Swamini. There will never be a disappointment. And this we can do by the mercy of Gurudev. But it has to be, this, this one-pointed love has to be on our Swamini because this is eternal. If we live or change bodies, there is no meaning. If we have this point, our love exchange will be eternal. And in this way, when Gurudev speak about these topics, he always speak about Swamini. This is the goal, to fix all our love on our Swamini's um, service. All then, when we are one-pointed to make her happy, and her one-pointedness is to make Krishna happy, then there is no other goal to find out. There is nothing. And we can see also in Jesus, his point was not to make the people in this world happy. Many he healed, but that was not uh, that he made them in a material way more happy. He likes to connect by this healing their Atma with the Father and bring them in full face of the love of the Father. That was not that he make a body workable, that they can see or like this. 
the real meaning of we can see is that we see the Father, or in our case, our Swamini, in all, in every moment in our life. Then, Rajeshwari, there is no meaning of living or dying or changing body. When we are fixed in this, then old life is empty and the new life starts as a manjari. And this is eternal. And this love is eternal. And Gurudev many times said that we have to see in our children, in our wife, our husband, we have to see the Atma, Krishna and Swamini's love. And then that is the eternal view. We understand this when we see in every living being who is behind this, that is eternal. And then we uh, we are leaving the material platform and growing up to the spiritual platform. We finish with our ego and start with the new ego. And if I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and if I give my body to be burned, but have not love, I profit from nothing. I get no good results. No? Mm -hmm. nothing. There is nothing coming from. So we see institutions now, they help very much other people. Feed the poor, no, that's not bad. We also do this in Mungya Mandya. We feed also the poor, Prem Prashad. But there is a small difference in this feeding. We are much more interested to feel the living Atma than the, the body, the material body. And Prashada makes the difference. What is the meaning of Prashad? Prashad is meaning of feelings. These feelings, actually, we offer, not this material rice and dal. And uh, by this effect, this love, what is inside the food, will enter the heart of those we are feeding. Not only in, in uh, Munger Mandir, we are living here in a company who is producing prasadam. And uh, this is so important because actually we feed the soul. We feed that what is real alive. The matter is only alive because there is a soul. When the soul is leaving this body, there is no more life. So, and in this case, St. Paul is describing, and if I bestow all my goods to feed the poor and have no love, that has no effect. So we have to feed the poor with love. Actually, he 
described this. If we feed the poor, we have to put the love in the food. And this is meaning of prasadam. And we can also see Prabhupada. Wherever has a darshan of Prabhupada, he will not let them go without prasadam. And so, like Prabhupada Suniti said, our Gurudev is even more heavy in this. <laughs> if you sit with Gurudev, you need seven bellies. Yes, uh, after seven days, you have to make a, a stop for seven more days. Otherwise, you will become double weight. Full of mercy. <laughs> Full of love. <laughs> He is using the prasad to press us. If that what we not understand by the mind, he give by the belly. <laughs> so I think most of you who ever been in Mungia Mandi, they know what I speak about. <laughs> so and this is real love. What he is giving there because in Munge Mandir this prashadam has a special quality also. This prashadam uh, um, including the love of our Gurudev and the love of Radha Mohan. And uh, there is a, a special mood in this prashadam. And this is the special mood from Munger Mandir. So every temple has a special mood. That is not all, uh, not all prashadam is the same. We cannot think all oh, prashadam is prashadam. That's not true. There, the feelings of the temple or of the family where you get the prashadam is in the prashadam. So, if we like to grow one-pointed, we also have to take care where we get the prashadam from. Maybe our mood will change if we get the prashadam from a different place where we get the prashadam of the scriptures. <laughs> But you're right, Suniti. We have many examples of the importance of prasadam. It's a flying kiss. Flying kiss, yes. And uh, if somebody like uh, you know Radharani wants to kiss her dasis, they will never say no. <laughs> yeah, it's also a good example how we have to behave. That we are, when we have. Uh, uh, um, some guests in our house. Now, we also have to, to cook, to prepare, to welcome. No, everybody with with uh, some uh, prasadam that they can take part of Mahaprabhu's movement. It's so easy, no? So. What who said there's nothing to speak, Tina Daya, huh? When he met Gurudev first time, no? there is nothing to speak after the hug, he says, after, after the, the hug, after no? embracing. Mm -hmm. And uh, same as with if you have uh, a prasadam, there is no need to speak. If you get it, you get the feelings. So no, sorry. And I also want to add in this verse, if I give my body to be burned, I was thinking maybe this is kind of maybe tapasya, no? Yeah. This is that I give so many hard, you know, renunciation. I will, you know, I will even burn my body for God or for the, mm. you know, for for looking. You know that for showing that I'm not attached or whatever. You know I'm not. Uh, I don't have such a Christian background like Gora. 
So I maybe just say from the background from spiritual people who want to show that they are very renounced, but if this renunciation is a dry without love and the heart is not melting, then there is no profit means we don't make any advancement in our bhakti. And that's what I feel. Do you think it's right? It's right. And I like to add that we can give our goods to the poor, but that is not 100% percent what we are, can give, what we are able to give. No, right? We can give everything. It's also described in the Bible that Abraham want to uh, uh, offer his, his, son. his son Isaac to the Lord. But even if we offer our children to the Lord, there is still one thing we have, and this is the body. And also this body we can offer. But if we do it without love, even this, it is completely useless. That is the meaning behind this, no? So we can give everything, even our body. But if we offer it without love, and we see also an example in the Govardhan, uh, uh, this, this festival, no? they put so much food to this Govardhan, and, but he was not satisfied. Right? Mm -hmm. And now you're, he said, give me more. Give more, me. more, more, give more. So, that is the example. And then, at least, they put a leaf of Tulsi. Wow. Then he was satisfied. He was and in mountains of rice, he, he took. But he was not happy. And there was something wrong. He was not. Mm -hmm. But with one leaf of Tulsi, it was complete. And this is just that meaning in this verse. This is this law. If we put the Tulsi, Tulsi is the embodiment of this law we put in the food, in the boga, in the after that, it is prashad. And then the Lord is satisfied. So that means this is not the meaning of the amount of material food. The meaning behind this is the love. What is we bring in the food that makes him satisfied. And so we can offer everything, even in the Christmas time, to the poor, but if we do it without love, Krishna or Jesus or even our Swamini is not happy. It's not bad, but it's useless. Hmm? Mm. I was just thinking the mandra bath, you know, we give also our all bodies and we give all our energy and this is the hmm. this is the highest meaning of giving the body i feel hmm. but of course first of all i have to feel and uh, uh, mm, become very close with the spiritual body and then i can and i can be active in it but still i was thinking yes the love is always the number one yeah no? Love means the service to Shimati Radhika or the service to all her souls, not all her dasis, all the living entities. But if that service is, is only for the service to be a good person or to you know feel better or whatever, whatever motivation, it will be not in the mood of love. Mm. I remember many years ago, Suniti, when I asked Gurudev, I never do a 
installation of our deities, a mm -hmm. formal ritual. And I asked him uh, how to do this. And Gurudev looked and shortly he said, no need. They only need your love. No formal installation, no ritual, nothing need. Our love will instill the deities. We we'll call them. So nice, huh? Easy, natural relationship. Our Gurudev is, is so merciful. Now you see, we don't need to learn all this Brahman uh, 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 scriptures to uh, uh, repeat this, all these slokas and, and do this. He bring it easily on the point. And also he, he knows our capacity also. <laughs> so he has to make it easy. <laughs> It's not because we are the highest lovers, no, we are the most fallen. <laughs> so, but uh, it's, it's, an, it's a beautiful teaching and it could be also coming from Jesus, for me. It's love. Yes. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not show up or be a show shows up. How do you say that? Wanted not itself. It's an old English word. Love does not make a show. Yeah, love does not make a show. Yeah. Of itself. Yes, of itself. And love is not puffed up. What what is meaning of suffers? Is langmütig. Ah, langmütig, ja. Yeah. So that is uh, langmütig. Oh, this is in English <laughs> to translate suffer. Yeah, love has a long breath, we would say. Yeah. It's langatmig. Yes, it, it, that meaning is that it forgives so many things. It's not that it's judged our behavior, whatever. It's not so easy judging. Love is a, a yeah, langmütig. It's, it's a really a beautiful German word that I cannot explain. <laughs> Maybe somebody else would like to explain. <laughs> langmütige Liebe. Langmütig. I can only imagine when Gurudev has disciples and sometimes they are very impersonal. I have to apologize, but they don't write, they don't come, they don't speak. And maybe after 10 years, they come again. But good if he is in this category, his love is so generous. He never says, oh, you didn't come, you didn't speak, you didn't contact me. He is just like not judging, not judging and fresh in every moment. That I feel that I have experienced myself very, very tolerant and and very uh, non-judging and very um, just not, you know, notice what happens. You know, what are five years or ten years? It is a moment in the moment of love. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think, so need to Nothing. I you you said maybe we should explain what is a long breath and um, i think if you have mistakes we are not running away even i can love you with your mistakes mm. yeah. and i can serve you and not uh, judging and not all this thank you mm. So maybe it also could mean like you have the same mood and this mood is not influenced by any circumstances. Your mood is your mood. You love. Whatever happens, you love. Hmm. Also means tolerance, stableness, mm -hmm. and patience. Mm. 
Yes, this one word has so many beautiful meanings. No? <laughs> Langmütig. Generous. Yes, okay, let's continue. And when I feel also in this verse, I can feel uh, Swamini very much because she is not envious. She is not uh, putting herself up front. Mm. I have noticed in myself because of my lack of love, I have a tendency to put myself in the picture. Let's say I was neglected as a child and I always want to win the love and attention of my parents. Just like, let's say. But in Swamini's case and becoming a manchari, I feel that stepping back and holding myself, you know, in the back, it's much more uh, relishable then always trying to show up. So I feel that I have learned in my practice. I am learning. I'm still learning. I'm a fool. I'm still learning. Mm -hmm. That is that not be uh, showing up, being kind and not be envious. If someone has a very good, uh, realization then i am also happy i am not envious mm -hmm. love is not envious shimati radhika is not envious that krishna loves all the gopis because anyway they are her expansions but also she wants to make him happy and she always is looking for another gopi that she has better qualities than herself I must say that I'm has reversed here. reversed many things Sorry. in my uh, material consciousness. Yes, who is it? Oh, I I just wanted to say in connection with this love also, uh, like uh, Radha Mohan love towards us is like that in in mm. context of doesn't see any wrong. Like uh, for example, I felt before. Uh, we were so much, uh, I feel, at least I was feeling like that, like uh, we're thinking, oh, don't do this apparat, don't do that apparat, be careful is that, you know, if you miss the, uh, one round extra you do, not, you don't count, or less something, it's problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, the focus was on sin, on apparat, on mistakes, and there was some fear, oh, if we do mistake, we will not be loved by Radha and Krishna. You know, this, mm -hmm. this was focus. And in Radha Dasyam, actually with Gurudev, mm -hmm. all changed. Because deep, deeply inside, we, we felt this, that love cannot be like this. It's not love if it's like this, that if somebody counting our mistakes, taking a note, huh? mistake, okay, one, giving like lines, and then if you get five lines, <laughs> kaput, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, uh, I mean, this is uh, not, for me, it was always nonsense, I couldn't uh, live like that, so that's why I was also frustrated before, but the point is that love is like that, they don't care, yeah, we did mistake, but sometimes they use our mistakes, mistakes, they use them to guide us, mm. to show us love. Mm. Sometimes they put us to do some mistake. They they give mm. us the mm. path that we make mistake to learn to grow. Mm. Mm. That our love becomes even deeper. Yeah. So there is no mistake. When we are with Radhika, we are always guided. Even if we are thinking, oh, well, what's happening? Why am I this? Why am I feeling like this? No, it's, it's part of the path. We are guided by hand. She, when we gave her hand, she don't leave us, ever. She's yes. That's an important point. We block ourselves, not she. We have some 
meanings behind ourselves, what we are, who we are, who we have to behave, and so on and so on. Uh, but she not have this. She is open for exchange love. But we block ourselves by some wrong concepts. concepts. Mm -hmm. And and that moment we open ourselves and uh, close all these doors of wrong conceptions. In that moment, we can take her hand and she will give us hand immediately and we can follow. And there is no, no more wall in between us. And this wall is made by our hand, by our false ego. And in that moment also, we accept ourselves as a manjari, as a dasi of her. Then automatically we are not in the front line. No, we, we step back. We are always there, ready for service, but nobody see us. We are not, even in, in the pastimes of uh, Rata and Mohan, we are not in the first line like gopis, sakis, manjaris, a step back, do the preparation, nobody see us. It is long done before the pastimes happen. The kunja is already ready. And even in the pastimes, we are hiding. We are around waiting for a hint. We are there, but we are not in the fr front line. And is every, everything fine? <laughs> you need something? <laughs> <laughs> Can I do something like this? <laughs> no, no, no. Nobody see us, but a small hint. We are there. So that is our manjari mood yeah like like some system administrator uh he's behind the system but system is working yeah you see <laughs> yes yes <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes so niti not puffed up yes not puffed up so now comes another verse Love does not behave itself unseemly, improper, mm -hmm. and is not seeking its own. Its own profit, profit yeah. like profit, no? It is not provoked, and it does not take account of evil. It doesn't see the bad or the evil. It just sees the covered love. So that we can see in, in our Swamini also, no? So Krishna many times doing... Naughty things. Naughty things. But... She shows the man not to judge him, but to increase his love. That's a big difference, no? If, if we have some problems, we will judge. We will go, yeah, you do this and do you do that. But she, her, her man, that means loving anger mm. like this. This is only to grow his love to her and uh, to make feelings higher. This is a big difference. And this is what this is not seeking its own, not seeking its own, and it's not prov uh, provocate. And it's not 
account the evil, ne? not counting. If you love one person, even in this world, you will forgive everything. Rade, rade. I think if, yeah. we if we understand that actually we are living in the world of love, mm -hmm. it is actually described that the whole existence, three-fourths of it, it's spiritual. One-fourth of it is material. So if we see this picture, everything is out of love, the whole. Three-fourth of it without clouds. One fourth mm. of it with mm. clouds. This clouds is the false ego. What does the false ego actually is doing the whole day? Good, mm. bad, good, mm. bad, good, mm. bad, hot, cold, up, down. It's differentiating. As soon as we stop differentiating, we are in love. Because we understand, like you said, The bad things in life are just to help us to become again more deep, absorbed in love. So whatever happens in this duality is just wanting to get us back because it's a game, it's a play, like the children are playing in their children's room. So the whole system in the children's room is that we love We have to learn to love again. But the whole existence is always in love. So it's definitely true. There's nothing existing outside of love. And only if we distinguish, we may understand, aha, still false ego. Do I stand in the front? False ego. Do I stand too much in the back? Also false ego. Do I want too much? False ego. Do I want too less? Also false ego. So whatever we distinguish, we want to control and we want to actually put uh, on the point, that's false ego. So, but if we are just flowing in the flow of love, then gone. For me, this picture is very helpful. Three fourth is sunshine, very clear, no false ego. One fourth we are now playing in is just false ego clouds. If we go out again in the sun, we will be again in the lilas. Not so far away. Yes, beautiful. Thank you, Gauravani. I was just looking if Gurudev was here. He was there shortly in the beginning, but I think he disappeared again. So, love does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth. It's clear, huh? And then the last verse that we have printed out, I think. Wait a minute. No. No, we have many. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, then we continue with the verse that Gurdiv likes most. When I was a child, huh? Go on. Because Gurudev is also loving this uh, But we, we have Yes, we, we can only once more verses before this. I will read this. Okay. 
Love never failed. This is 13 8. But whether there be prophecies, they shall be done away. So you see, this power of prophecy is temporary in this world. All these powers are temporary. Whether there will be tongues, they shall create. Cheese. 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 Mm -hmm. Aufhören. They will. they will empty. Whether there be knowledge, it shall be done away. We can see this. All worldly knowledge is temporary. It comes and goes. And even the, the Vedic scriptures, we listen. Why? Krishna explained in Bhagavad Gita to Arjuna why he is uh, uh, giving this again and again, because it's, it, it, it goes by the uh, influence of time. The parampara was lost. Mm -hmm. It is lost and he has to come to bring it back. So we see all knowledge will go. But the love will stay eternally. Love starts in the beginning of the universe, in the creation, and it will be there in the time of destroying. And even after destroying the whole universe, love will be there. This is what we read now is what you explained, Suniti, with the child. This is... You like to read? This. Ah, this, okay. Yeah, because Gurudev likes to speak about it and we are running a little bit out of time. I want to... Uh, I read this. Yeah. For, for we know in part, and we prophesy in part, that means we are not complete. This is temporary meaning. This is... Uh, uh, material meaning of all this knowledge and all this uh, also mystic power of prophecy. It is temporary. But when that which is perfect is come, that which is in part shall be done away. You see, in that moment we enter in the spiritual abode. Then we are in the perfect we are not a part or a parcel of of something then we are complete in that moment so we see also in this scripture by paul saint paul how deep is the meaning in this it's unbelievable really they are self-realized this you can only re read when or, or write when you are realized and now your part comes suniti or gurudev's loving part when i was a child i spoke as a child i felt as a child and i thought as a child now that I am become a man, I have put away childish things. So now that we can understand in the way that uh, when I become a man, I'm uh, more elevated than a child. But Gurudev is explaining it's upside down. The other way around. The other way around. And this is the teaching by our gurus that we have to become a child again. What is a manjari? Is it 50 year old lady? No. Manjari is 11 years old in this age. So that means it's, it's a child. And 
this to understand is is a miracle it's it's a a complete wow what to say i don't i cannot explain in english no it is it's, it's really a, a, a transit and yes transformation it's a real transformation when we understand this verse what you read when i was a child i spake i spoke as a child i felt as a child and i thought as a child that means there was no ego no false ego even in this world if we listen to the children small children there is not so much ego no 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 but when i became a man i have put away childish things this is the false ego i accept myself as a important person of this material world and things happen yes and we also remember from chaitanya chaitamrita right gorabani that uh one who is foolish a fool can understand it hmm. means if there's not such a big blockage in the mind of uh, different different concepts of who i am or who i want to be and who others should think i will be then this foolishness or this childish nature will make it more easy to feel the love and to serve the love in our case serve the love and i always love in these uh, movies about jesus when the disciples they do you know they there's this part where the disciples meet him and then they get up and they leave everything and they just follow him is also like a child the child is playing something and then some other child is coming ah let's play this and the child says yes <laughs> and he or she can leave this old stuff behind yes radhe radhe even a foolish child can understand prachendra nandana it is set in chaitanya charit amrita so what does it mean it's not said god it is said vachandranandana can be understood by a foolish child and like you said so nicely when i was a child i was thinking like a child i was also loving like a child that's the point love like you never you would never be hurt this is the love of a child love like you would never be hurt no one hurt you your love is completely pure this is the love of a child and this child can understand vachandanandana why because vachandanandana is only movable by pure love mm. by such a pure love which is not in any way thinking distinguishing not in any way completely pure and i think this is the point here also it's the eternal point for for all living beings if we can love in this pure state then we will understand everything yeah then we can receive and we can uh, change the perception and because through all the filters of this per perception that i have now of myself of my life these filters are very thick and nothing is you know the spiritual energy and the revelations they will not be able to move through this thick 
layers of of ego and that's concept. such a wonderful point you are you're making now it's so wonderful yes this is actually just a filter because love is always pure there but our filters this is the false ego our filters are actually covering we can see this also if we drive outside and someone is doing like this why you drive like this actually the heart means to say oh don't drive so fast because otherwise nice to meet you <laughs> so something can happen you know something can happen or nice to see you or something like this the heart is telling this but then the ego is filtering it and then comes out this like are you mad why you drive like this so actually it's just the faults the filters actually who are changing everything but the real intention of the heart is always just hug the other one love the other one have exchange with the other one because this is the love which is coming through radharani through us through the heart actually and it wants to express itself in some way and if there are filters it comes out like this but if so much pure love is going through the filters will actually go by the time the pure love yeah, you is give running and running and then the filters will go give the uh, perfect uh, step to the next verse uh, here your filter is called a mirror mm -hmm. suniti yeah it's perfect for now it's we see in the mirror darkly <laughs> but then face to face <laughs> that's it huh now i know in part now i i i have a little part of a big puzzle i don't know where it fits i have not the whole picture and the and the mirror or you filter no it is uh uh it is uh dust is and the filter is full uh the uh, the full mirror is dusty you cannot uh, uh, see in in true it is blocked no and and but then face to face face to face means in relationship you are in relationship and exchanging love directly there is no need for uh institution there is no need a religious system love no needs uh, too much explanations in that moment you have a child a small baby your first time it's in your arm immediately without explanations without anything love is there face to face and this face to face in the spiritual meaning it's also face to face not only in a material here we have a material body but also in the spiritual abode there is face to face because there is love and love works like this face to face we need to a love to love each other we need two person and for this is so important that we bring Radha and Mohan together that they can see each other face to face and we can see them face to face we we are part of this loving exchange we are the servants of this loving exchange so beautiful description right i for me it's it's the the highest you can find in the bible and even in the vedic scriptures it's rare to find so beautiful descript the description of of love yes then i will see you face to face and now i know in part but then i should know you fully even as i also was fully known wow 
Everything is there. This is Sita Dea. This is not a material face to face. Sita. You would have explained this is the power of this body. That this body is able to see other Sita Dea, other spiritual body. With this body we cannot see, but with this, the Sita Dea has the city to see other spiritual, spiritual bodies. bodies. Exchange love with this body, face to face. And I was fully known. I also know myself. No, we don't know ourselves. We think it's a it's a it's a material body. But then I know myself fully. I'm a manjari. I'm a dasi. I'm a child. <laughs> I'm a child. <laughs> and now the last part. Finish this. But now. Remain faith, hope, love, these three. And the greatest of these is love. Gurudev loves very much this last topic. We need faith so that hope will grow. And out of this, the love enter our hearts. And from the face, hope and love, love is the greatest, St. Paul said. I was just thinking, what does it mean, faith? If I have faith in someone, I have faith that he is actually acting in love, right? This is my faith. Hope I have, I also will, will do this. That's my hope. I also will learn how to deal in love, only in love. And what is the goal? to be in love and exchange love. So it's all about love. Yes. Yes. Sarade. The face brings us to a teacher, to guru. And then he gives hope and love. Dibya Gyan, this eternal knowledge. This love, this eternal love is he put in our heart. This is a bar that we know who we really are and how to exchange this love to the person we are loving. We know ourselves, we know Ishtadev. That's it. Love, then this love will become eternal. Never ending story. So, so Merry Christmas to all of you. I hope you will you bless us on this day with your love and when, with your well wishes that we can all grow together to the lotus feet of Shri Guru and Shri Radha Mohan. And it's so nice to see you all, to feel you all. And I hope now we have some uh, live streaming to Munge Mandir, at least what they try. 
because internet was on and off these days. And uh, thank you for taking part and be our bells of love jingling. <laughs> I like to show some prasadam from Suniti, handmade prasadam. Feliz Navidad, todo. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. <laughs> Thank you for choosing this wonderful text and all your sharings.